Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the War of Ideas. Um, today, we are actually doing an interview with um, a special guest. His name is Brianna Wu. She should be in here very, very soon. Uh, we are going to be talking about abortion, economics, free speech, Musk's takeover of Twitter. I know we talked about this last week, but um, Brianna um, has been talking quite a bit about it on Twitter itself. Um, so, you know, it piqued my interest. We'll probably be talking about it again, maybe get a little bit more uh, disagreement this time, allow the war of ideas to, you know, really get clanging and banging. Um, and, you know, other trivial topics um, that aren't really all that important. That's satire, in case nobody noticed. Uh, Trav, good to see you. Uh, three others in here. Um, again, we all should be here any second. Um, for those of you who haven't been here for any other of my interviews, um, that's okay, because I've only other had I've only ever have had one other interview um, on this show anyway. Um, I tried to go Socratic method. Um, I'm going to be mostly focused on asking questions and exploring the ideology of the person that I'm talking to. This is not a debate. Um, I will likely disagree with Brianna on the many number of things, and some of my questions will be challenging and will ask her to explain things more in depth or explain to me why she believes what she believes, but overall, I'm not here to really tell her she's wrong. Um, that's not going to be my job or how we conduct, uh, interviews. If she wants to argue with me, she can come back during a show where, um, we're not doing an interview. Um. I might ask some questions that are slightly more challenging than others if I cannot bite my tongue, but that's as far as we are going to get. Because, you know, that's just my style, and I think it's just more of a productive way um, to do an interview. You know, if you argue with somebody, they're going to close up and shell off, um, maybe not be as open. But if you're just asking questions and genuinely trying to understand people and know why they think what they think, I think it leads to more productive interviews. And... Um, some, I'm stealing this quote from someone. I can't remember who it is for the life of me. I think the person's still alive. But the quote is, uh, clarity over agreement. And that's very much um, my strategy. Uh, it's very much my strategy. Um, I am messaging Brianna now. Uh, Brianna, if you're in the room, um, challenge each other is good. Well, 100%. I will be asking challenging questions that ask... Um, I will be asking challenging questions that requires her to answer them, for sure. But um, I just, I just want to give everybody um, manage expectations, let everyone know that this is not going to be a, um, a, a debate style. More of a, um, you know, tough interview, uh, is how I like to think of it. Just messaging Brianna now. Ma papa. Um. Yeah. Uh, Brianna, if you're here, um, hop into callers and I'll uh, promote you to being a speaker because right now you're in the, um, if you're here, you're in the uh, Invisible 3. Hey, Sheila, good to see you, unsanctioned citizen. Sonia, uh, welcome, welcome to the War of Ideas. Good to see you. Oh, Twitter Blue is up now. Have you guys paid the $8 for Twitter yet? Have you gotten verified? Uh, and let me know in the chat. I want to know. Um, let me know in the chat how you feel about $8 verification. I want to know. I want to know how you feel. I want to know if it's a uh, if it's a good idea or if uh, Musk is a big hypocrite and he's actually limiting free speech. What hey, up, John? What's going on? Oh, now i got to put my headphones on here, I think. I'm going to get feedback from myself. Can you hear me? I can indeed hear you. Yes. Cool, cool. So, what do you think about right. how Elon Musk has been handling the uh, takeover? Look, Travis, I feel like you're a bad influence. I feel like you just want carnage. I, I feel like that's what you want. No. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I think um, I think it's really going, going, and I think, and I think, that, think this that this could, could fall apart. apart. Um, the, the economics. economics. Of the situation, situation, as far as, as I understand, understand are very, very fragile, fragile right, right, now, right now. now. But, but um, I, have I have hope that, that it'll be better. better. It, it seems, seems that he still, still wants content, content moderation. He has, has to have some level of moderation. Otherwise, he'll lose his advertisers and Twitter will just become 4chan. I think the goal is basically just to widen the Overton window a bit more. Um, basically, anything that's not like spamming racial slurs and anything that's not like illegal, you're probably good. 
Um, I, I think that's probably um, going to be where we wind up. And to me, that's good. I don't think that um, people should be banned for saying untrue things that they genuinely believe to be the case, or which are often are actually true in the long run. Um, I think I'm a, I'm a big champion of free speech, big champion of the war of ideas. The more places that we can have that, the better, in my eyes. And of course, there's risks and dangers, but that's true with all freedoms. Um, I'm hoping there's also a real means to face your accusers. I don't know what that means, but there is something, and this predates Elon. I wish I could give him credit for it, but I can't in good conscience. Um, this community notes feature, where it's not like content moderators, like algorithmically deleting people out of nowhere for saying that shit that they don't like, but like just a group of people in the community, just regular Twitter users who, you know, like sign up and go through like a very small process, get to like add context to things. So, um, like Biden got fact checked by um, the community notes. They he said that um, social security was at record highs, and someone's like missing context. It's at record highs because inflation is at record highs, and it had to rise to um, match that and to maintain its real value. And you know stuff like that, where it's just community members just adding context that can be upvoted or downvoted by the rest of the community as to whether or not that that's helpful. I mean, I think that's a good like crowdsource grassroots solution. Um, that's not like you know the, the the tweet isn't going away. It's not it's not being deleted. It's just people getting to comment in a somewhat more official capacity than the comment section. Um, fact check Depotis always. Yeah. Um. You know. Ironically enough, if you want to prove that this is balanced, people were giving Elon credit for this, and they're like, "Look, first day in, he's fact checking Potus. Lol, based." But no, not really. That that feature already existed. Um. But I'm sure Elon will keep it and you know try to improve it if he can. Um, so that also got fact checked, ironically enough, by um, the the context, and they're like, Elon Musk is now in charge of Twitter, but the Birdwatch feature predated him. So, um, you know, true, true neutral moderation there because it's coming from everybody. Um, Commodore, who on earth is Commodore? Brianna, is this your? Uh, is this a secret username? Please introduce yourself to the class. It is Xaver Fang. Okay, it's not Brianna. Um, How you doing? Yeah. What's up? Uh, not much. We're just uh, we're just waiting on one of our um, our guests, uh, Brianna Wu, to arrive. And in the meantime, we're just kind of shooting the shit, warming up a little bit. Uh, some of the topics we're going to be talking about. Um, one of which is Musk, the Twitter buy, uh, the ethics of free speech in general. Um, so, uh, I mean, what do you think? You think it's a good idea? And then I'm um, also, what do you think about the $8 verification? Are you going to, are you going to get, are you going to buy the check mark? What do you think? Well, I have base. I'm basically living under a rock. Oh, okay. I'll, um, I'll, I'll catch you up then. Uh, Elon Musk bought Twitter for like way too much money. Um, <laughs> And people are freaking out. And it seems like his goal is basically just to make it a more free speech friendly platform. Um, you know, um, some advertisers are leaving. Musk has like declared yeah, thermo. Well, this stuff you mentioned about. Scusi, say again. You said something about an $8 verification. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, $8 verification. So Musk doesn't like the lords and peasants system. Um, and I understand how ironic this is going to sound in a second. And then we're going to get to chat. Um, so he says he doesn't like the lords and peasants system of like blue check verification. He doesn't like the idea that just because you have a blue check, like your opinion is worth more on Twitter. So instead, he said that anybody can have a blue verification check mm -hmm. if they pay for Twitter. And if you pay $8 a month, you get the blue check, and then you also get um, ancillary benefits like boosted posts, posts, not as many ads, um, some <laughs> other ancillary benefits. And, you know, a lot of people tried to dunk on Elon Musk because they think that Elon Musk doesn't have an IQ higher than double digits for some reason. Because they're like, oh, he said he hates lords and peasants, but they're making people pay for the check mark. Who's elitist now? 
but that's not what he was talking about. He was talking about um, a lords and peasants in terms of your importance, of your opinion. And in making it accessible to anybody for just $8, it very much does destroy that um, hierarchy of whose opinion matters. Um, so that's so that's a new thing that he's doing. People are complaining like quite a bit, but um, he's been repeatedly memeing. That's really radical. That, that's $8. It's really radical. Radical, you say? Radical, did you say? Xavier Fang? I just didn't hear that. Um, yeah, I just, did you say radical? I yeah, just can't yeah, tell the so. eight dollar verification, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yes, that's part... what I yeah, so another part of it is, again, because Twitter's financials suck, Um, they're really bad, they have not, I, I don't think, I, I, I can't, oh, like, do I can't ground this in anything, Um, in any of, anything uh, solid, but what I will say is that I've heard from, like, a number of sources that I trust that um, Twitter has never really been all that profitable. Um, and so I think Musk is trying to trying to make it happen um, and try to make it uh, profitable in some way. And then if he kills two birds with one stone, right? I mean, Musk is kind of a radical guy. He does lots of radical things. He makes electric cars that actually people want to buy. And he makes rocket, rocket ships, ships for like, for like a, third. a third of the price of NASA that can like land themselves. He does a lot of impossible stuff. And then a lot of the time it works. Not all the time, as his detractors will often point out, um, but you know maybe this will maybe this will uh, pay off. We'll see. Uh, but it's definitely a massive shift in how Twitter works for sure. Um, but it was also something is that he's been getting clowned on quite a bit on on the interwebs on Twitter um, because um, the yeah. ad, the advertisers have left. An awful lot of advertisers have left, um, and people. Um, who don't love Musk or who aren't like people on the right have blamed this on basically they advertisers are scared it's going to turn into 4chan um, and there's no they shouldn't be advertising there um, and then other people who are more Muscovites people on Musk's um, who are more on Musk's side of things have argued that essentially they're just those advertisers are cowing to public pressure from like you know um, groups of left wing people so um, there's an interesting dynamic there. Um, Musk has announced, I think, like some he's going to be putting up, um, has proposed something like a not safe for work filter or something. Like tweets can be classified with different levels of like um, of um, rating for like appropriateness to different uh, audiences. So that could really put um, that could help keep the speech 100 percent free while also you know not exposing people to stuff they don't want to be exposed to and without um, you know, scaring off advertisers. And I think that this kind of thing, like, you know, this um, crowdsourced um, grassroots um, approach where everybody gets to only see what they want to see based on their input, not based on algorithms. Um, and people get to add context and fact check based on like real Twitter users. And the usefulness of these fact checks get to be um, upvoted or downvoted by the broader community. Like all this stuff is a really great way of outsourcing moderation without having to be, you know, um, elitist and um, and uh, super restrictive about it. And you know, I think that's um, I, I think that's valuable. And again, not all of these ideas came from Musk. Like that's not what I'm saying. But um, I think these are going to be the things that replace like the algorithmic shadow bands and. The, um, the outright perma bans and stuff like that. Um, we're going to go to chat real quick here. Unsanctioned Citizen said, I got ghosted by a higher profile guest on Friday. Uh, let's let's not um, give up hope yet. I'm hoping she's just late. She uh, tweeted a couple times on her personal Twitter account that like she would be here. She, she's tweeted out the show. So, you know, you'd think that she has some personal investment in showing up as she's advertised it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I scared her off. Uh, we were we were talking. Um, full disclosure, we were talking, and I was just talking over some of the topics we might talk about, um, like uh, economics, abortion, gender theory, um, Musk, and free speech and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I'm scary. I I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, hopefully, she still shows up. Um, Lexicon says, I would not be surprised if she did some research and decided this controvers that this conversation was too right wing and doesn't show. Um, it's possible. It's possible. Um, I, I think I, um, I full disclosure, I did say um, I might ask you what a woman is as a joke. I even added a lull to try to not scare her off. 
I said I might ask her what a woman is, LOL. In, re- in translation, I was definitely going to ask her that question just to get a reaction. Um, but I think that might have been enough for her to check out um, some of the rest of this uh, show's history. Um, that, that That's one theory, but we don't want to leap to conclusions, right? You know, very legally minded. Ended here, very fair. We give everyone the benefit of the doubt. It's possible she's just late. Um, if we want to go into radical radical conspiracy theories at the end of the show, um, we can do that. But, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think that's right. I don't know if we have that's evidence not, for that yet. Um, John, oh. I don't think it's radical to say that the, the left wing uh, has a tendency to eat itself. I'd be concerned if I was in that same group. Anyways, I just want to say, um, I think the, uh, the $8... Uh, verification thing is more along the lines of just to tie it to somebody's bank account so they know like that you're a person if you're paying for it right that's another big part of it it's another way to make sure the verification works he um he instituted this rule that you can't change your name and keep your verification you can't impersonate people he's he really cracked down on that recently um yeah so yeah I, i think that's also a big part of it as well you know lot lots of his moves have multiple purposes uh, Pangburn says that Brianna is on her way. That's fantastic. It's okay. I like shooting the shit with you guys anyway. Oh, Lexicon, you you went down already. That's so sad. We were just we were just getting into it. Um, Nivik said um, it's about public interest and where you are about genuine content, right? The blue check is against that and authenticity. Any bum with eight bucks can say they are the president of China and speak for China. Um, no, because the blue check doesn't mean what it used to mean, right? That would have been true if the homeless bum got the blue check um, pre-Musk, but now the blue check doesn't mean anything other than you are a real human and um, you pay your dues. Um, You are a real human and you pay your dues. And I think it's also going to be pretty soon here a way to verify somebody's actual identity. I think if you change your name, um, you lose your verification. I don't know how he's going to do that. Really, I'm not sure. But... um, no, I do not think that homeless bums are going to be able to imp- um, to impersonate uh, Xi Jinping um, under Musk's Twitter. I don't think that's how it works. You can say I'm the Chinese president. Yeah, you can say it, but you can't change your Twitter handle to that. Oh, was I wrong? I'm so sorry. I'm wrong. All right. Well, I'll see you guys um, back at 9 p.m. I guess this was just a... Uh, I guess, wait, 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 no, no, I was early. I don't want her to come if I was early. This is my fault. We're, um, <laughs> you know, time zones, you know, they're, they're really not that difficult of a concept, but they're just very easy to forget about. Um, for now, we're going to keep chatting. We're going to wait on um, what the word from on high is. I am more than happy to wait until 6 p.m. PST, and this can just be, you know, an amuse-bouche for all of you. But Travis is telling me to stay alive, so maybe she'll accommodate me. I will be very apologetic. Um, I think she might have the moral high ground to start out this show based on that, um, which, you know, could or could not be a problem. Um, yeah. It's interesting. It's definitely interesting. Um, a couple of people – oh, that topic, a similar time zone for the internet. That is a topic, a singular time zone for the internet – I would support a singular time... No, that doesn't even make sense. A singular time zone for the internet does not make any, like, kind of sense at all. Um, May Starwar called me a fuckwit? That's fair. That's very fair. Um, in my defense, I, you know, I don't really want to blame the app, but, like, Colin is, like, automatic based on, um... Pangburn says, I'll defend John to the death. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. That's so sweet of you, Travis. Um, yeah, I'm a bit of a fuckwit. I'm not going to lie. Uh, in my defense, though, my my very limited defense, that does not provide a stay of execution. just makes me a little bit more of a martyr rather than a traitor. If you see what I'm saying, I'm still going to get executed, but at least I'm a little bit more sympathetic. Um, in my defense, Colin automatically shifts time zones based on where you are. And um, it meant that I never had a visual you know, indicator that that would be relevant. Like it wasn't, it wasn't in my head. And, and, you know, the visual indicator when I was timing this show didn't indicate to me that there were even such a thing as time zones. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like a philosophical conundrum here. If, if Colin doesn't, 
imply the existence of time zones? Do they even exist? That's the question. There is a universal time zone that I could have used, says Mace. I am not aware of universal time zones. I am not aware of this fact. Sheila is in the caller queue. We're going to bring in Sheila, the unsanctioned citizen herself. Sheila, how are you doing? Throw, throw tomatoes. Throw rotten fruit at me. For Why? Me Why would I do that? Because I don't understand. Has to be hostility on. with you. I'm a hack. How does anybody listen to my opinions if I can't figure stop out? Stop it. Stop. Stop self-deprecating. It's not your fault. Uh, Self-deprecation is the most funny kind of humor. Um, well, at least for now. But it's not as... It's not yeah. as... People don't enjoy it as much as you do. Let's put it that way. I like it. <laughs> I, I like it. I enjoy it. Brianna will be here in 10 minutes. Fantastic. She's accommodating me. That's incredible. <clears throat> well, good yeah. for her. And, you know, she'll have a she'll have a good show because she's on with a good bunch of people. I, I, wanted, I think so. Yeah, I, I want her to feel relatively confident. I mean, she's she's really a storied character. Yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. I had not heard of her before yeah, um, I we got the assignment. Either. But um, I, I looked into it over the last couple of days and uh, she's been through a lot. So before we even get to the issues, I'm kind of more curious to about her personal story and career. I think is where we're going to start. Um, but yeah, um, I can't, it's going to be exciting. She'll be on in 10. So it's very gracious of her to accommodate. So is she running for crazy. office now? I mean, is, is she doing a campaign now? Mm -hmm. Not that I'm aware of. Her Twitter certainly doesn't indicate that. Um, she, she ran for a U.S. House representative in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um at, at one point she didn't win evidently um well she didn't win that's it painburn keeps telling me to bring the heat travis you just want hostility you like you're such you are the devil on my shoulder travis is the devil on my shoulder you know what i um, hope travis obeys his own rules for the first time ever i went to the painburn hangout like dialogue uh you know just wonder and there's like all these rules there's all these rules for painburn yeah, you know, yeah, the Discord's the real heat. Cool. They're pretty limited, yeah. though. Yeah, they're fairly limited, but, you know, like, bring in the heat, you know, bring bring the fire, you know. Whoa, whoa, that, heat, that heat is not, fire and heat is not against the, uh, is not against the, the Tangler and Hangouts um, official rules. It's just you have to be, bring the heat in a helpful manner. Basically, you mean like don't don't ad hominem flame somebody? Yeah, just don't attack people personally. Attack the ideas. Not, just deal with the ideas, not the person. That's basically the entire thing. That that's like there's a lot of rules, and like you also we don't allow spamming or like advertising. Um, but other than that, the only rule is just deal with the arguments and don't deal with the people and don't worry about the people. That rule is probably going to be violated today. Um, not by me, but um, I have a sneaking suspicion that that we might go there. We'll see. Um, Lexicon says, from his model of well-being, Travis preserve, preserve, prefers the well-being of the collective show. <laughs> the collective? Well, Travis um, lives his life um, by a moral principle of maximizing well-being for himself and for others. Um, it's, it's, akin, if, it's akin to utilitarianism. Not, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's, it's, right. it's akin. So theoretically, um, Lexicon is making a joke here. Um, which I'm explaining and making not funny, but you know, well-being of the show overall is more uh, worth more than whatever heat is brought against any individual. But I will like I don't want every I don't want anybody to think that I'm going to be a pushover here. I'm going to ask the tough question. No, I mean, That's John, it's just, just more of a Piers make, Morgan make here, a good utility out of it. Yeah, make, like yeah, don't don't waste it. Don't don't waste it. You know, don't make it a frivolous like. Jerry Springer show. Right. That's not that's not <laughs> the point. That's not what I'm doing. And also, as much something you guys might not know about me is that I don't like really love conflict. It's not my favorite thing in the world. Like I've gotten pretty decent at it and I do it, but it's not like my favorite. So I'm again like I'm thinking a lot more Piers Morgan than a lot less Ben Shapiro. Like just more interview and less debate. Uh, it doesn't mean the interview won't be challenging or anything, but um, that's kind of that's Piers kinda Morgan new. gets kind of uh, yeah. I would say Piers happy. Morgan gets snippy. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. but, but he can get he can get very pointed in a very personal way. He does. I don't always. I mean, he's a he's an inveterate survivor, but I don't I don't really respect his brand of journalism. You know, he's he's very British in his attack. He's very 
No, no. I mean, when I say British, I mean tabloid attack. He has a tabloid attack on on the way that he does things. I'm, and wait, hold on. Instant replay. Instant replay on that quote. I don't really respect his brand of journalism. He's very British. Um, and then we're going to end the quote there. And that's that's the Why quote. Why would you clip yeah. it there? Because there's there was supporting That's the important information. That. That's what the people want to hear. May says, you son of a bitch. Uh, yes. That is a correct. That is a correct. Uh, that's a correct thing. No, my mother is wonderful. Um, <laughs> yeah, we uh, we do not allow attacks, personal attacks on anyone on the show. We do not do ad hominem except British people. That is the exception. When uh, I say British, did did you get the other part, or did my mic cut or something? Uh, no, a- you said you said the rest. I heard the rest. Okay, it just seems yeah. that that was you know. But do people understand what I mean when I say British journalism? No, I know what you mean. Tabloid stuff, yeah. It's the Sun tabloid, you know. Mm-hmm. Exhume all of their business that is unrelated to make them, you know, and and they conflate these compare these moral comparisons that don't have they reach for the straw man they reach for these bad fallacious arguments and and push them together like it's a real issue it's it's very deceptive and and vicious so don't do that either (laughs) to be be perfectly honest most modern journalism is more like that now but I, i i'll have to take your word for it that uh the the british variety is exceptionally so well, I mean, uh, I, you want to if if this is a philosophical discussion born from f- philosophical um, direction, you know, you're not going to get as much productivity out of the out of the um, relay because I, I like the way the one of the benefits of being in the room, your room, Pangburn's rooms, is that you you go to the idea, and if your argument is flawed, you get. You get schooled by your peers on why. You get schooled by everyone. Oh my yeah, God. you get schooled by everybody why this, in a Socratic method, so to speak, not necessarily, but a Socratic I mean, method, yeah, you know, a, here is why your idea sucks. And that is why I like it. <laughs> right. I, I think I'm going to be less, here's why your ideas suck, as like a positive claim. I'm going to say, a criticism that occurs to me is this one. What is your okay. response or what do you think about that? Um, whether or not I actually agree with that criticism will remain um, strategically ambiguous, I, I think would be the term. Um, Nivik says, don't you dare hold back. I don't want to hear going softball excuses. <laughs> Leave it all on the field. I, I will do my due diligence. I will do my duty to the collective of the uh, war, Pangburn War of Ideas. I will serve my purpose. That's right. This is war of ideas. You got. You got to stay I will, true to form. I will. I will not be. Um, I will not be committing any Pangburn war crimes, but I will be. <laughs> uh, I will be engaging in ungentlemanly warfare. Those might be the same thing. I don't remember what ungentlemanly warfare means in uh, reality, but I, I've heard the term bloody before. knuckles tonight. That's all I know. I'm <laughs> out. Oh uh, no, we're gonna be we're gonna be mostly Socratic method, but it'll be a tough Socratic method. Um, Lexicon says Piers Morgan can, can't be, can be respected question mark. I thought the British talking head was to make fun of them. Yes, it's true. And they're funny accents of which no funny accent will ever trump May Starwalks. His is incredible. It's, uh, it's, it's indelible. I love it so much. I love Mace's accent. Hanaheim, you got an upgrade on your avatar, dude. When did you, when did that happen? Got a whole like snake, uh, snake eyes mask and thing and shit. Very cool. Um, Divine Evil says I definitely prefer inflammatory journalism over outright, outright lying bullshit journalism. True. Like, give me partisan journalism that is open about being partisan. Like, I I prefer that to like you know like the lying and the whispering like fucking snakes that like pretend like they're objective. That's so much worse. Just. Tell me what you actually think, and it's and then that's fine, and then I'll parse out the facts for myself. But don't pretend like your bias is objective. That's that's the thing that 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 pisses me off. So I agree with that. Um, Coach Sheila Pangburn says, "Oh, Sheila, you left. I'll miss you. I'm sorry. I was just reading chat." Um, Nivik says, "You should invite more people on for just a free flowing convo. You're a bit controlling. Just moderate," says Nivik. Aw, Nivik's giving me pointers. 
Um, yeah, I mean, we could do a more of a uh, free for all episode eventually, not today or next week, um, because I have another interview next week. But um, if you want to do more of like an anarchist one where I just kind of moderate, we talk about whatever the hell, that's fine too. Um, I, I, de- I genuinely try to moderate because um, that's you. People usually want direction when they're listening. People who are participating want no moderation. People who are listening want more. Um, is the thing that I have collected throughout my um, time doing this. So, you know, maybe if we want to um, please, uh, you know, if we want to favor one of those uh, interest groups one of these days, that's fine. Um, Very cool. Or control freak. Yeah, I could go super control freak and then just no one else talks and I can just monologue for two hours. That works too. Um, But yeah, um, trying to do more of it. Piers Morgan though. Piers Morgan sometimes does piss me off. It's so strange because sometimes I really agree with him. And then sometimes he does stuff that I just, I, I just don't understand. And I know part of it is his job, and a lot of it's his brand. I almost think of Piers Morgan as like Doctor Phil, like on on some level. Um, thanks for owning it, says Nivik. <laughs> yeah, I'm very self aware about all my foibles. I like to think, and if I'm not self aware about them, I'd like to be. Um, but yeah, Piers Morgan almost gives me a Doctor Phil vibe, um, and I'm not gonna really elaborate on why that is. I'm just going to assert it as fact and then let everybody deal with it okay mace wants to be here mace tell me why is piers morgan the british dr phil and why is it stupid to think otherwise your thoughts i don't know who dr phil is but oh my regarding, god I, I think your question means why do his why does his philosophy feel inconsistent um sure I, i'm just curious to hear what your answer is that's my question now. I think his philosophy feels inconsistent because it is, at least, the way he presents it. I don't think he is genuine about his views. I think he presents whatever view he thinks is going to be the most popular one at the time. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I think that's I think that's probably right, because he always wants to be the straight man. Um, and for those of you, yeah, some people don't know this. He wants to be the straight man as compared to his guest, right? So if he's talking to Ben Shapiro, he all of a sudden become he like talks less like right wing and he wants to be normal and like look at this radical. But, you know, if he's talking to um, someone else, you know, it's the same thing. He just always wants to be the straight man. He wants to be the representative of his audience, like you say. And um, that can change. Um, is that a type of consistency, would you say? No. Well, it's a dedication to a certain principle. Um, the principle, um, the principle is do whatever um, best reflects your be a be a good representative of your audience in the context of the interview. That's the principle. Um, what that um, manifests into is going to depend by its very nature. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think that's a um, decent um, approach? I don't like it. Okay, you wouldn't, would you? It's dishonest. Well, is it dishonest? Would it be dishonest if he was open about it? Or is it just dishonest because he acts like he's consistent when he's not? It's dishonest because he claims to believe things that he doesn't actually believe for the sake of popularity. Um, probably true, but, you know, lots of people do that, and it's bad when everyone does it. Uh, Brianna is here. Mace, you are no longer the most interesting thing in the room. I'm so sorry. I love your accent, but Brianna is the one we invited here today. Um, oh, Brianna, I thought Commodore was your guest. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Um, Commodore, I'm going to remove you from speakers, but you can call in if you wish. Brianna, I've sent you an um, invite to become a speaker a couple times. Please click it and hop up here with me. Is um, Brianna a man or a woman? She, Brianna is a woman. Um, I Would believe, she agree with you? I, I believe, Brianna. <laughs> okay. Mace, Mace, be nice. Mace, Mace go away. Um, as you can see, Brianna, we are on the top row, and everyone else, all the peasants, are on the bottom row. Um, so welcome, welcome up here in the ivory tower. I am so sorry for my inability to understand time zones. Um, how are you this evening? She's on mute, bro. Yeah. Brianna, I think you're muted. I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. Can you hear me now? 
I can hear you now. Welcome, Sweet, welcome. we got it going. It only took four times. Uh, sorry right. about the trouble of scheduling. Apologies on that. No, that is that is not on you. That is on my inability to understand time zones. Um, I have instructed <laughs> my audience to throw virtual um, tomatoes and rotten fruit at me um, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, so. stuff happens. Stuff happens. I've gotten screwed over on so many meetings. I once while I was trying to fund my game studio and there were millions of dollars on the line <laughs> screwed up in exactly the same way yeah. and missed a meeting with the venture capitalist. So <laughs> yeah, no, we're, sorry, uh, we're all human. Um, yes. I am no exception. Unfortunately, I know, I know I portray myself as an infallible God to my audience. <laughs> <laughs> you come off that way just that on, on Twitter. Um, yeah, yeah, speaking of infallible God, I've got to ask you. So you're, you know, all of your Twitter handles for everyone associated with the show, it's like a comic book figure. Yeah. How did you decide on yours? Because if I were trying to decide that, it'd be like, well, I love Rogue, I love Psylocke. Right. Like, right. how how did you how did you decide who your avatar was going to be? So to tell you the truth. First of all, it sounds like I'm being interviewed now. Very fun. <laughs> but um, to start, um, Mace keeps saying no. Kick Mace until you take callers. Yeah, Mace needs to get kicked. I'm sorry. I will answer your question very quickly. But Mace is being obstinate. He's British. You understand. But um, I didn't actually pick. That's the thing. None of us get to pick. Uh, the infallible god of the Pangburn, sir, is a very good <laughs> Travis Pangburn. He's um, the one dressed like... Mon L, I guess, would be yep. the closest example. Anybody who understands who Mon L is is a massive nerd um, <laughs> and should not know the answer to that. But he's uh, he's based on Mon L. I, I don't know if it was intentional, but that's what his color scheme is. But yeah, I didn't pick. Um, he just assigned it to me. And the reason that he assigned me the this one is because it's reminiscent of Captain America. And I, I guess I just have the facial structure that apparently I look sem- semi-similar to Chris Evans. Yeah. Um, and then it's also a it's thing. It's like about, I'm talking to him right now. You look exactly the same. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I've gotten that a couple times. Um, yeah. And then also on an ideological level, that's where a lot of the inspiration for the comic book characters come from. Mm-hmm. Is um, I tend to have the shield um, on the Discord anyway. Before I was um, a broadcaster, um, I generally defended things against mm-hmm. like multiple people um, who were arguing with me, and so that's why I got the shield. Um, I love it. I love it. But if you go back into Captain America comics, you can go back to like the eighties mm-hmm. and Captain America was not the character from the Marvel movie. I'm a, I'm a child of the nineties. Mm-hmm. Captain America was a metaphor for drug addiction and the war on drugs mm-hmm. back in the nineties. So you've got like, I don't know if you've ever played the old nineties game, uh, narc, but like, that's what Captain America was. Like he was fighting this, uh, Marvel comic drug called ice and was really a, a symbol for like the police crackdown on drugs in the in, in that era so a lot of layers to it right here yeah it's interesting you know comic book characters are very um they, they shift based on what's going on in like the social time like you know like one of the first captain america comics he's like punching hitler you yeah. know you have a very famous uh comic of like superman uh, smashing the clan and you know it, it very depends on the um socio-political um context um, the superheroes can mean anything. Um, Pangburn, oh, hi. It's wonderful to see you. Your camera <laughs> quality is um, slightly better than mine. I'm a little bit bar- embarrassed. We're gonna, um, we're gonna, we're, we're working on better camera call- quality. We're working on it. Yo, it's a seventy dollar razor camera. It's not, you know. There it is. It's, uh, it's incredible. And by the way, this is not on. Um, this is not on Travis's end. This is on my end of being lazy. Um, <laughs> Travis says that I'm a strong defender of the war of ideas, and that's why I have the shield. That's very sweet. Um, I love it. Yeah. You know, something I really saw when I ran for Congress is I was really coming from someone who became relatively famous in like a very, very narrow area, right? Like feminist, game developer. (laughs) Like that was my world. Like people that had a a lot of knowledge on, say, Unreal Engine 3 and, uh, you know, superventing the 75 bone limit for animation in there and like feminist theory as it applies to the technology workplace. And when I ran for Congress, the first thing, like it was like a, a slap to reality because I'd gone from like this very small part of the Democratic Party to having to talk 
talk to dudes that worked at the elevator union, you know, to, to, um, you know, stay at home moms to, you know, right wingers who, uh, you know, would vote for a Democrat if they were the right one. And it really, it was such a eye opening, positive experience in finding that connection with people I couldn't, uh, didn't agree with everything on. And it, it really complicated my politics. Like I think people tend to, you know, they think of politicians as, as sellouts sometimes. The reality is okay. you're talking to such a, a vast number of people that you really do grow to um, like see the world with more subtlety. I mean, you just can't go shake 50,000 hands and meet 50,000 people without you know, changing an opinion or two. So, well, see, now you've begged the question. See, I had a question ready for you, but now you've already for another it. one. So what, um, so we're going to go that we're going to do that instead. Um, so what opinions did you change or um, what subtleties did you notice that maybe you didn't before? Um, you've begged well, the question. You set me up for it here. No, it's cool. It's cool. I think my core um, ideas stayed the same. I think mm -hmm. it was more of a of the way that we market our ideas to the public. I, I feel very strongly that Democrats, especially online, especially on Twitter, tend to talk to like a hyper-educated um, group of people that already agree on everything. And that's just not the party. It's, it's, it's not. The people that are out there yeah, they, they don't know the difference in every single trans ideology. They, um, you know, they, they, they don't read like three newspapers a day. Uh, they're genuinely getting their news from Facebook and they just, it, it, it's kitchen table economic issues. That's what they care about. Do I have enough money in my pocket to get through the day? And just understanding how terrible democratic messaging is overall, especially online. We've got to speak a lot less like we are giving a seminar at Harvard and a lot more from our hearts, in my opinion. Right. And I, I think um, I think that's basically right. Um, sorry, uh, Harper. Um, yeah. And, you know, I want to add on, but I can't um, because I, I think that's basically right. Oh, so, I have a question. No, it's because I think you said everything that um, I, I would say. Um, I think that this is true for both parties that we have to, um, for both parties that you really just have to meet people where they are and what, what yeah. they actually care about. That's one of the stats going into the midterms tomorrow is um, they did a poll. Uh, you, you probably have seen this. It's um, like, what issues are the parties focusing on? And then like, which issues do people care about? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, it seems that the Democrats are focusing on issues that did not poll as particularly important. So they definitely have that messaging issue you were talking about. Um, yeah, so I have another question for you. Um, so when I read about you, I read, I read quite a bit and I scrolled through your Twitter a little bit. Not gonna, <laughs> I don't know if that counts as cyber stalking, but I, I think it's uh, in a professional context. Oh, public figure. It's cool. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. Um, so what exact so i want i read a lot about it but i'd like for you to um tell me a little bit about more about what gamergate oh boy yeah um, i'm gonna be 90 years old and i'm still gonna be giving interviews about gamergate uh the, yeah, we'll the, the long and the long and short of it is uh, in 2014 there was uh it was the birth of the alt-right um uh and it was basically a hate movement within the video game industry you had women that were uh trying to draw attention to our working conditions which i'm sorry are wildly sexist in the video game Good industry way. Uh, we meaning women that work in games, women journalists, women engineers, women artists, women animators, uh, trying to like draw attention to how we were treated in the industry. And uh, a lot of trolls online uh, feeling like their culture was under attack and all of that uh, snowballing into a truly terrifying amount of um, of bad deeds online, everything from rape threats, death threats, stalking. Talking. I had people um, draw out maths of paths of my home from uh, publicly available documents uh, to tell people how to come in and slaughter my whole family and my dogs. Um, I had my bank accounts hacked. Um, the FBI got involved. It was a shit show top to bottom. So why'd they go after you specifically? 
They went after me because I um, was very vocal about the way that women were treated. And, um, you know, this didn't start with Zoe Quinn. That's a real uh, mistake to, that I think has gotten mixed up in the history of Gamergate. Uh, you know, Anita Sarkeesian was definitely the start of this, but Samantha Allen, uh, Lee you Alexander. To, you have Catherine, to backtrack a little bit on those yes. names. Sure. Basically, yeah. high-profile women in the game industry have been targeted and, for a long time, and right. some were my friends. Okay. Um, Mace is asked, this is a good question, is how were women treated exactly? You said that there were oh, conditions God. that bad. Um, I am so, aware. Yes. I will say, what, what I, I'm not really a gamer myself. Um, oh, I will, really? I have to admit. But I do know that, um, from what I've seen, that it, there, there's like large, it's male-dominated as far as yeah. streamer goes. Um, 100%. And you, so I'm, I'm just curious um, how exactly are, I mean, it seems like a very decentralized industry, right? Mm. So I guess, well, as far as I know, you can correct me on the record. I'm going to tell you what I know. And then you can tell me if I'm wrong. Sure. Is it seems so decentralized. It's not like a, um, like an office building where there's like a boss who makes rules for everybody. Like explain to me how the working conditions can be universally bad for women in an industry that seems on the surface, at least so decentralized. Well, let's think through the history of the industry. Okay, so uh, you had the Atari crash. Uh, you know, Atari in the 1970s, some of the earliest game designers there were women. It was a relatively 50-50 company. Um, there were some issues with Atari management. They're exogenous to this, but let's fast forward to the 80s. Uh, you had the NES, which was, you can go look at the documents for the NES, the marketing documents, and see they changed. They made a decision in 1984 to market the Nintendo Entertainment System to boys. Uh, when the Super Nintendo came out, they dusted off that document and said, okay, now we're going uh, boys from 15, uh, 5 to 15 now. The Genesis copied that playbook. So we had a decision 30 years ago in this industry that we were not going to target women or include women. You can go back to uh, early episode, early issues of no power. You can see how it's assuming that the player in that era was a young boy in a way that Atari didn't. That had a ripple effect through the industry that continues to this day. Um, and the result of that is the workforce within the video game industry is extremely male dominated. Uh, in, okay. in 1989, uh, you had the number of women that played games was about 11%. Today, that number is actually on its head. Uh, women are 53% of gamers today. So there's a real imbalance now in between who plays games and who's interested in games and who the workforce is which is a whole okay. bunch of white dudes okay so what do i want to ask so um how does this differentiate so let's assume for a second that this differentiation in um men and women playing um was intentional and not like a response the the advertising was not a response to trends but was designed to create trends let's say sure. um still how does this difference in the amount of like little boys or little girls who or adults sorry um who play video games how does that translate to better or worse working conditions exactly could you connect those dots for me there's there's rampant sexism so for me uh go look at who makes it to the top of video game uh companies uh who makes it to an art lead or a programming lead or a ui lead or a playtesting lead overwhelmingly it's going to be men these are wildly sexist places to work i can tell you even being a woman in networking in the game industry is a it is a sexist nightmare. I don't know a single woman personally in the video game industry that does not have a lot of horror stories to tell. It is everything from being sexually harassed. Um, it is uh, being belittled. It's not having your technical accomplishments taken seriously to problems like uh, if you're trying to launch a studio, uh, not having the same access to venture capital that, that men do. Um, if you want some proof of this, just go look at the 
uh, lawsuits against uh, uh, Activision, you know, Ubisoft, or Electronic Arts. You know, the um, some of these uh, stories that have come out. It's everything from a woman committing suicide at one of these companies after being sexually harassed by her boss, and then the boss sharing nudes of that woman to all of her teammates, even as she's dead. Um, it is a real culture of degradation constantly that makes it very hard to work there. Okay. Um, I'm going to let some callers in because they're raring to go. Um, <laughs> Let's do I, it. I will, but I'm going to ask you one more question before I do, just to um, – uh, May says that he's triggered, so um, be prepared for, for for that. He's very why, British. Why are you he, triggered? <laughs> he's he's always half-joking. He's British. All right. Um, but my question is, is that – so – we have examples of this happening, right? Um, yeah. Um, what is the evidence that it's a systemic problem with the gaming industry and not just, you know, sociopaths in power? Um, Go look at the lawsuits. I mean, the state of California certainly seems to think this is a congenital problem. Like, again, who are the biggest companies? Nintendo has struggled with this in court, Ubisoft, Electronic Arts, Riot. Um, you know, go through the list of companies, Bungie. Um, like again and again, this ends up in the court system, like Did structural problems. Uh, overwhelmingly, yeah, uh, they're they're settled. Uh, in fact, when you looked at the Microsoft um, acquisition of um, Ac Activision, uh, there was a lot of scrutiny there because they had so many lawsuits in the pipeline. So, um, yeah, most of these things eventually get settled away. Um, I got to tell you, women that come to work in g the game industry, we don't want to go. We want to make games. We don't want to be in right. court. So, right. you know, just imagine how much carnage there is for women along the way. And they're all in California, right? Because Silicon Valley, like th this is where everywhere. I'm... It's Boston. Everywhere? I live in Boston. I got treated like shit here in Boston. I was um, just in Boston yeah. the other day, actually. Yeah. Funnily enough, maybe I saw you out the window of the plane. <laughs> okay, we go. uh, we're gonna bring in some questions, and then we're gonna move on to um, some issues stuff, um, Let's probably. Do it. But uh, hey, uh, Shardle, uh welcome, welcome to the War of Ideas. Um, how you doing? And uh, what questions you got for me, or well, probably more interestingly for Brianna? So I wanted to bring up uh, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, the Marvel uh, movie. Um, and it's not gonna. This movie is not the same without Chadwick Boseman. Um, not in it. Um, after he uh, died. Um, you know, I'm. I still want to watch it, but you know, I'm still a hey, fan mate. of the Marvel. Shout out. Um, could you tell me how this relates back to our conversation, if you don't mind? You were talking about comic. You were talking about comic uh, books or stuff like that, and I just wanted to relate this to that. Okay, yeah. I mean, Chadwick Boseman was a great actor. I liked watching him. Um, yeah. are you still gonna watch the film even if he's not in it? Because I know many people um are are not inclined to watch it because he's not in it, so they don't have any reason that we're not gonna watch it. We're just gonna skip over it. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't really watch MCU movies as much as I did. I'll probably catch it at some point. As much as I used to, look, I, I still follow the people on the on the social media. I'm still up to date. I just don't. I just don't watch as much. Thor: Love and Thunder killed my soul a little bit. I'm not it was so bad. It was so, so bad. It was so bad. Oh my god, that was such a bad movie. They had Christian Bale as the villain with like a beautiful motivation too. They could have made it so good. It's the missed opportunity. It's incredible. The reason why I wanted to mention Black Panther is that he's he's um. Uh, part of Marvel, like he's he's yeah. part of uh, he's an Avenger. That's yeah, why 100%. I wanted to mention that because you you I I wasn't there when you guys were talking about comic books and stuff like that. I wasn't there because I you were still talking with Brianna, so I wasn't really there to talk about that. Yeah. So I was I wasn't I wasn't able to talk, share it when you, were, you guys were talking about that. So I'm sorry if I'm you you've gone past hey. that and I'm and I'm talking about it now. Hey man, no worries. We I really do Cause, appreciate cause, your input. Yeah, so I mean, uh, but it, it's um, I'm gonna watch it, but you know, uh, I'm gonna see how you know how they're gonna do without Bozeman and how the movie's gonna yep. still progress on without him. Like, are they still sure. gonna? Is it still gonna be a good movie? Because I bet well, it is gonna be one of the best movies without without him there. I bet they're gonna carry on the legacy of of Chadwick Bozeman um, yep. in Black Panther. So it's coming out on Veterans Day. So if anybody likes that movie, then definitely check it out in a. Um, give yep, me your thoughts. About it. We'll see. Uh, thanks yeah. for coming in, man. Really appreciate your input. See ya. See ya. I'm um, gonna see it. 
It's not my favorite series, but I'll go see it. Yeah, I'll go see it. I, th- I think I liked the first Black Panther. I thought the first Black good. Panther was a bad. It was, it was a little overrated, though. Are you so dim-witted? You honestly couldn't tell that guy was trolling you the whole time. Oh, okay. <laughs> he look, was just look, trying to waste her time. Look, Mace, I have the, look, Mace. <laughs> look, Mace, I have my sneaking suspicions, but we're, this is the war of ideas here. We try to let people say what they want to say. Um, we and can also talk for an hour chance- about uh, Black Panther. We can do that. Right. And also on the off chance that he was genuine, you know, you really don't want to be a jerk. He didn't take up that much time. It's good. Um, well, I'm here to advertise uh, the new Avatar movie. Oh, That's my God. Okay. You know what? You, you don't have rights. <laughs> Actually, I will, I will block you. Okay. Uh, no, no, my my you actual you question um, could to uh, Brianna, please. Yes. And obviously, it was We're a long friends. time ago. You can call me Bri, by the way. Bri. It was yes. a long time ago, so if you don't have this information on the top of your head, that's fine. It doesn't disprove anything, of course, sure. but I'm curious if you do happen to remember of any specific examples of women being mistreated by gamers. Oh my god. Uh, in what sense? Um, I mean, my focus was always on the workplace, so I can tell you when um, I would go to, uh, say, postmortems here in Boston, uh, which is a huge event for for uh, for people to network. This is back when my husband and I only had one car, so we would meet up after work and he'd drive over with me when I'm trying to start my game development career. And people would talk to Frank as though he was the engineer, and people would treat me like I was his girlfriend. Uh, which was beyond upsetting. Frank can't even update his iPhone. He's so technologically uh, uh, terrible at this stuff. Um, what do you mean by that? That they, that they treated you like his girlfriend? I'm sorry to interrupt. They would flat out say, they would start talking to him like he was a game developer. Who do you work for? Uh, blah, blah, blah. It was just stuff like that constantly. I can tell you trying to get my game studio funded. It was just sexist and insulting every single step of the way. Um, just trying to get coverage, trying to network with uh, people that had capital. Um, it was. It, it, I I don't know how to like prove to you the sexism exists in the field. I can tell you, it's just uh, you're constantly being looked and talked to as though you don't deserve to be there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you know, the anecdotal examples, and that that's not to disparage them. Anecdotal uh, examples really uh, hurt your heart a little bit um, to hear that people get treated that way. I mean, if you're looking for there are plenty of articles written about Gamergate itself, uh, yeah, all of which happened on Twitter, of you know. Yeah. Um, literally, I, Newsweek did a story where I was the woman that got the most death threats online for an entire month, which is a very dubious award. I've got to tell you. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, that was great. Like there's not a good way to have a law and order episode made about your life. There's just not. Yeah. um, We're going to do one. We're going to go to shoot. We're going to do one more caller. And then I have, in fact, a question. Um, I think it'll transition us to the more cultural side of things. But uh, Sheila's first. Sheila, what are you thinking? Hi. I'm really excited to talk to you, Brianna. Awesome. What's crack a Okay. Well, I am, you know, by proxy, a spouse of uh, someone in the gaming industry. And oh, oh my God, have I heard about it? <laughs> four years. Four years. And just, you know, just watching the, like, the proxy carnage over the years has been really upsetting. I'm in a totally different, uh, and it's weird. It, you're a complete layup for me because uh, I I do the policy and political end of things. You're kind of like an amalgam of like both. Yes. So it, it's it's so crazy to, to even be on you know even be talking to you. So it's a real treat and a privilege oh. for me to t- to talk to you because um, you're you're working on the political end of things and you've done journalism. But you've also you're also uh, a witness to some of this this really super toxic, unaccountable uh, environment. And so I just want everybody to know that that women aren't the only ones who get chewed up by the amoral architecture and unethical architecture in the gaming field. Okay, they they take out you know you know really talented racehorses in the back after a project. And shoot them in the head because they don't want to award bonuses. 
Okay. So they, it's, it's not, it's not the most emotionally mature, but some of the people who are involved in gaming uh, from a financial aspect, the, the top down is very, some of the most sociopathic creatures I've ever had the, uh, I don't know. Displeasure. I, I don't know. I mean, it's like I've, I was, I've been around Hollywood types. I've been around film types. I've been around art types. I've been around in L.A., you know, there's a there's a psychosis that kind of goes with acting and, you know, an occupational hazardry with every field. But there is a specific, distinct sociopathy that comes with some of these top heads in gaming. Yep. OK. And they're they're really psychologically abusive to their workforce. Yep. So that pathos gets passed around. In a, in a toxic workplace and yes there is sexism but it's not the only thing um that that really goes on so i wanted to, to uh, indicate this link that i put up there bonnie ross the uh director for 343 john worked there for years oh wow okay. under 343 i just gotta Not say me. notoriously ugh, like crunch like yeah wow i'm so sorry unbelievable yeah. so um but 343 was a grisly place to work in Oof. many ways. But I didn't know. Uh, she was at the top of the food chain. She was a woman at the top of the food chain. So the allegations against women in general, once they get at the top, is that they forget the women in, 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 yep. the, uh, in the wheel works. You know, they're, they're no longer women. They are just, you know, they're meal tickets and punch cards, you know, a means to an end. You know, so I've heard I've heard those arguments, but I don't necessarily think it's like that. I think that, um, you know, Microsoft has its own weird insular pathology as a company. And then 343 absorbed what Bungie did. And then there was other things that were going on. So, um, you know, even though she's gone because she, she just left, she left like last month. And so what would you what would you say? That was an example of somebody that that's apex predator at the top of the food chain is a female go. Sure. I think, um, so look, you asked a question. I'm going to answer it honestly. Uh, I don't trust that any woman over 50, uh, in the game industry <laughs> is necessarily my ally. That's not to say, uh, I'm just saying it's a different mindset that they had. Those, people literally grew up and, and survived in a time where we did not have any kind of, of, of discussion about how women are treated in this field. And when the Gamergate TV show comes out, actually, uh, which is uh, it's being produced by, um, you know, it's being done by uh, Act 3, which is Norman Lear's company, we actually talk about this. One of our main characters is a, a woman that survived that whole time. Um, they're, they're just different. They don't necessarily support other women. They want to stay silent on these issues. Um, and I also just want to back up what you're saying. It's not just women facing this. It is, uh, you know, uh, people older. There's a lot of ageism in the video game industry. Certainly uh, people of color are facing this. Women are 8% of engineers by some metrics. Uh, black people are 2% of engineers by some metrics. So, um, you know, it is a grisly industry top to bottom. Well said. Yeah, I think, you know, this actually provides a decent transition to a broader issues. Mace is asking me to drop the nuclear question. Um, I have some questions. I don't know what the nuclear question is. I'm very curious. Mace, <laughs> yeah, come over here and drop it. Lexicon asks, Mace, when are you going to drop the fake accent? This is a, um, Peng, in case you are not aware of the Pangburn lore, uh, it is well established that Mace's accent is fake. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, okay, so here's the question. So, yeah, I mean, it seems that these corporations and businesses, like you say, um, they're capitalistic, meaning that they're inherently amoral. Um, yeah. You don't think so? Well, I, that's I, my, I, my... I am not a communist the way that some of my compatriots on the... Some of my friends on the left are. So, right. um, Neither I, am I. I. Do, I, I do agree that there are workplace abuses, but these companies are generally staffed by, by well-meaning people in my experience. Does, is that a distinction right. that makes sense? Right. Exactly. I, um, yeah. for the record, in case I, um, I don't, you might've understood me, but just in case you didn't, I'm not saying that capitalism is immoral. I'm saying sure. it's uh, amoral. Um, I'm actually, a, I'm a pretty that's, big that's fan fair. of free, the free market, 
But um, it does lead to this thing where, like Sheila was talking about, is that essentially to a company, its employees are just another input. It's just another means to an end. And the reasoning for that is so you can deliver the best thing for the consumer or the most profitable thing for the consumer at the end. Um, ironically, employees are consumers are often often the same people. So I was just kind of curious for your thoughts on this. Like, um, how do we maintain a prosperous free market while also maintaining morality? Um, where are you on that? Um, the economic side of things. So if you, very vague. it's very vague. But I think so I trust you. The wrong John way. used to work for EA, by the way, and, and oh, we interesting. got into yeah. the border of the EA spouse situation. They held yeah. him overnight during content lock. Oh my God. I'm no, so sorry. No phone yeah. calls. It was jail. sleep at the office crunch. I've heard all the, the, the problems. So yeah. this is, I am literally one of the fastest speed runners in the entire world at this game, Super Mario two, Incredible. number two in the entire world. It's speed running that this is an era of game where it really was about 20 or 30 people making it games today have gone from a half a million dollar product to a hundred million, 200, 300 million dollar product. Mm -hmm. And as the money men have gotten involved with this, the stakes are so high that these places have gotten to be worse and worse places to work. You brought up 343 Studios, right? The first Halo came out infamously like poorly planned and then it becomes a franchise and then 343 gets a reputation for just bringing people in making them work till they quit and then moving on and bringing someone else in um i think unfortunately i don't think unions are always the answer i do think they are the answer for the video game industry we have an extremely talented workforce that is highly technical and we need to start looking out for each other because the workplace uh, abuses are just so high uh, I don't see another pragmatic way forward. Right. And, you know, I really don't. There's this there's this idea um, with some of the people who are actual communists that I've talked to is that like capitalism is anti-union. And I don't think like that's right. I mean, yeah. you have a right to control your own labor. And if you want to join yeah. up with friends to maximize your like bargaining chips, that's fine. Yeah. Um, it would also be nice if people voted with their dollars. Right. I mean, sure. like I know. Like, it'd also be nice if people didn't buy games from companies that acted this way. But it seems like there might not really be any companies like that. Um, so I think that could be nice, too. Yeah. Um, Even when I was a Republican growing up in Mississippi, I never understood the argument against unions. It it seems to me if a corporation can get together and you know, do something in their best interest, I don't know why individuals can't as well. So, well the, um, right. The argument against it isn't a capitalistic one. You can't say that unions are anti-capitalist. What you can say is that sometimes what unions want are bad for the consumers. You can't yeah. say that. Yeah, you know, yeah. raising prices, stuff like that. And so that there's a reason that people could be upset. But, you know, there, that's the, the whole point is like that balance, that tension between differing ideas. OK, Mace dropped what the nuclear question is. So this is a good question. Um, OK, can I break in really fast and just add yeah, something of on course, Sheila. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I can never I can never say no to you. You're just too nice. Yes, you can. Oh, ask. OK, thank you. Thank you. Um, OK, so I actually had the benefit of living. Uh, my father's second wife was actually Teamsters Union mistress like that was like one of her jobs they get mafia don like okay so i mean i've seen the ugly side of unions i mean the truly ugly side the, the side where basically the 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 mafia levels of the government get rickrolled with the mafia levels of the unions and then the cultural and economic impacts of what happens when you know, the actual mob gets into a context with the union mob. So I could kind of see something like that projected into my mind's eye into the industry. You've got kind of like a a financial level Yakuza, you know, operating at the top of of the gaming studios right now. And they they are ugly. They are some of the worst people I think I could conceive of. Uh, but they are they are financing and VCing these studios. I mean, is there a way to find a more I don't know a better brand of, of venture capital to bring into the game so that there's I I don't I don't um, you know 
I, I don't. Um, I also just want to say with unions, I, I talked to a lot of unions when I ran for Congress trying to get their endorsement. I don't think I ever talked to someone that was a woman or black or, or gay ever. It was an endless cavalcade of, of white dudes. So, you know, based on that experience, if you're talking about unions lead to women being treated better in the game industry, part of me is going, uh, okay, what's, what's the step? Uh, I, I just... I don't see the connection of the dots there. I don't know. Why do you think that that's so, um, such a given? Because, okay, so you've got a problem with sexual harassment, a really big priority out of investigating other union workers and firing them if they do commit sexual harassment sexual at, sexual on sexual the workplace. Uh, you, know, you need those kind of policies enshrined. I'm just saying it's it's you're trusting that union to put it forward. I still think this is the way to go. I'm just saying um, I, I don't think a union is going to be a panacea for the industry congenital problems with how they treat people that aren't straight white dudes i have a suggestion it's it's kind of like Please. a straight ahead policy uh suggestion you know if you can prove that they had a prior history and all of them do all of them have prior <laughs> history legal prior histories which is really hard to prove i mean you have to do john you have to do a lot you have to do a lot to get a conviction on any kind of sex crime in the workplace. Right, because I mean, it's always... Was, a there must have been a heaping evidence. stack of stinking laundry like two miles high to get the level of, of uh, cavalcade from the legal and, and government industries to recognize what has happened. So, And it has happened repeatedly throughout this industry. So if they have this legal baggage, which they do, um, you can get um, an attorney's general... Uh, injunction or kind of ah, not an injunction uh, what do i want to say I, a, a conformance uh conformance agreement some kind of requirement that they the, that they legally have to conform over a certain probative probationary period that they they have to prove conformance in this area in this area of infraction so this is a compliance measure which you know seems draconian but in, in a company and in an industry that has forfeit this particular morality, John, um, I think it's, a, it's something, it's a tool in the kit. And I would not hesitate to reach for it. Right. Um, Sheila, I just realized that there are people waiting behind you. We're gonna I'm going to go. go. But thanks for your input. Yeah. I'm going to drop the, uh, the Mace's nuclear question and then we're going to go. Um, so way back when you were talking about um, – just to be clear, when you're talking about unions, you were talking about unions in the gaming industry, right? Or yeah. are you referring to all male-led unions? Uh, I haven't worked in those. I don't have personal experience okay. with it. I can just okay. tell you, running for Congress, uh, when it came to leadership, I never met any women. So there it is. Right. So this is kind of ties into Mace's question. So sure. you, um, way back when, you, you mentioned how there's like way more male engineers. And just now you mentioned how there's more way more male union leaders. And... The question is, is it not possible that men simply are more interested in these things and it's not necessarily systemic discrimination? And I'm going I'm going to back this up like slightly and then I'll let you respond. The studies out of super egalitarian countries like Nordic countries like Norway and Sweden, in which, you know, they try to be as egalitarian as possible. The voluntary differences between the sexes in their chosen professions actually get wider. So if it was systemic discrimination, that doesn't track so much. So what is your what are your thoughts on the thing overall? If if you've ever heard, um, thoughts on the study, let me let that? me ask a, let me answer your question with the question: Why do you think? Yeah, you know, instead of let's go to someone that doesn't work in the field because I'm I'm reading his comments here. You know, instead of treating that as serious, how would you explain every woman that works in this field? coming to the same conclusion and the numbers showing women leave at three times the rate of men. Right, how, right. how would you, Not, um, I'm asking you, like, yeah. what is your answer for that? Well, I think do you think we're all mis- stupid? Yeah. Do you think no. we don't understand? Do you think Mace understands our lives better than we do? Do you think we're quitting because we're not good enough to, to stay here and work? Like, how would you explain that? Um, I think there's been a bit of miscommunication. Sure. Um, I'm not talking about the gaming industry specifically. There seems to be actually an awful lot of hard hard evidence in regards to the gaming industry. Sure. Um, there, but these disparities that we're talking about 
aren't just true in the gaming industry. There's just generally more male engineers like in the world or in the U S like these mm. men, women disparities exist, not just in this gaming industry where, you know, you have tons and tons of evidence. Um, so I, I think that's what I was referring to. I'm sorry if there's a miscommunication. Maybe your answer is still the same. It's, it's not personal. I'm just trying to no, push know. away from this this framing. Uh, I don't uh, like. Let's look at technology as a wider field. Do you know what pair programming is? No. Okay, so pair programming. When uh, my first language that I learned was uh, uh, COBOL because I went to school in Mississippi and our computer science uh, class was trash. Uh, we had a very underfunded program. So the first thing you do on the first day is they go, uh, let's pair up and we're gonna do pair programming. And it, you're, you're in there and you're the only woman in the class and you're there with the dude. And just from the very start, you're the only woman in the room and they're sitting there and they're telling jokes and talking about girls they want to F or, or boobs or this. And you're sitting there trying to learn to program and do the assignments with a dude that is nerdy and a freshman in college and has the kind of like personality you expect from somebody like learning COBOL, right? Um, and it's, it's humiliating. Of course, it makes you not want to be there. And it's this culture that feeds into the other kinds of culture. I don't think that women are innately less interested in engineering. We're certainly not less interested in games. I think there's a, a legacy for how women are treated when we try to pursue engineering careers that um, unfortunately shows a lot of women the door in very subtle ways. It's like you have a pipeline and it's leaking at every single point of it. It's leaking with very young girls and what they're taught uh, they can show interest in in elementary school and high school. It's there for what you study in college. It's there for the kind of jobs you get for the first time uh, you, you graduate from college. It's there once you become a parent. And every single step of that way, you're invited to leave. So it's not just the game industry. It's the wider tech industry, which is why every single woman I personally know in engineering has this commonality of experiences. And it's 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 a it's like we we have a career that we love and we're being forced to choose between a death of a thousand cuts every single day and uh making money and and doing something we love and it's it's a terrible choice either way well i'm not going to push back on <laughs> you can push that. back no i'm going to push back on something but not sure. most i can't on most of that because of my utter lack of personal knowledge Sure. What I will say is there's one statement in there that you said that you don't think that women are less inherently interested in engineering and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think that according to what you've told me, and I'm assuming that you're telling me the truth, is that it does it does seem like they're in these industries in particular, there may be some correlating factors that um, push women out at a higher rate. But the psychological literature is pretty clear that on average, men are more interested in things and women are more interested in people. And again, I'm going to bring up the egalitarian countries where it's like the most egalitarian societies that we can are, that we can create with our laws and the differentiations are even bigger and in stereotypical ways. So I'm not saying that the discrimination doesn't exist. That's not what I'm saying. I'm sure. saying that it's kind of difficult to attribute all of the difference to just that, given these other bits of evidence. I'm just curious on uh, what you think about that. I think, you know, uh, let's, let's posit that what you're saying is true. Just for the sake of this conversation, I'm gonna say it's true. At best, that is a, it's almost a, a theoretical discussion. I'm not focused on if women are, are theoretically, uh, like from, like growing up in a crib as having as much of a tendency towards engineering. I care about a 20 year old woman when I go speak to her college and she's telling me, I've seen all these stories of how women are treated in tech. Am I going to get sexually harassed when I graduate? Mm -hmm. I care about her and what her outcome is. And let me tell you a very quick story. Um, I went down to a college. Uh, this was in the South. Um, and there was a woman down there young, like gorgeous, smart, just the most on top of stuff, 
person I've ever met in any of the literally hundreds of colleges I've talked to. And she comes to me and she says, she says Brianna, it is my dream to work at X Game Studio when I graduate. Can you please help me get in the door? And I'm like, sure. I know the recruiter there. I back channel with them. Uh, she gets to go. Um, she passes her internship there with Flying Colors, gets on her first team. And then uh, the very, like the first few months she's there, she goes out drinking with the boys. And then her direct report gets drunk in front of her entire team and feels her up in the bar in front of everyone she works with. And she's calling me at three o'clock in the morning, crying and pissed and humiliated because she doesn't know how to go to work the next day and look those people in the eye because they ultimately only saw her as a sex object. I, and she eventually quit, by the way. She works in uh, a different, different field now. For her. I care about her being able to pursue a career she's damned good at more than I care about that academic question. I'm an engineer and I care about outcomes and the outcomes for women are terrible in games. You know, I, th I think we actually agree. That's, yeah. that's, this is why I like to talk long form. So if I'm hearing you correct, first of all, I am one of the harshest. Um, I am unnecessarily, maybe not unnecessarily, but I am very harsh on uh, the crimes of the sexual variety. I think that it's like the worst thing you can do. I'm in favor of castration and death penalty for people who go, all the way. Maybe not for feel -ups. Those people should just go to jail for a few years. But the point is, um, the point is, is I think I agree that we shouldn't have things in the industry, much less cultures of, you know, men who are acting improperly, pushing women out. Um, so would you be okay is let, let's pretend for a second that we could wave a magic wand and that the gaming industry was like, not the cesspool that you described that it is. And yet that there's still just a disparity, like it's just 60% men or 70% men and 30% women. Um, and you wouldn't care to, to be clear. No. Um, as, no. Okay, great. Then we're, we are very similar because believe you me, there are people who say that the disparity alone is enough to indicate like massive injustice and discrimination on like a systemic level. It like goes back to what you teach kids when they're three and it's like all stupid and, and I hate it. But if I you think can't we tell agree talking we should... to me. I'm a little bit more practical. Than yeah, most I mean people. that's why I'm to, that's why I've been talking to you, and I'm really 100%. glad that we seem to agree on this one. Um, I think one of the things Anita Sarkeesian differs from me on is if you look at uh, the woman behind Feminist Frequency, who famously I uh, was one of the first targets of Gamergate. She focuses a lot on the output of the industry, right. which is a very sexist output. You know, bikini mm -hmm. chain males, tropes, all that kind of stuff. Well, it's what sells. Well, it's not, that's not a good thing necessarily, but I, I don't care about any of that. Right. I mean, I roll my eyes when games like dead or alive come out and you've got boob physics being like the majority thing, but ultimately look, uh, horny men are going to play something. They're going to enjoy it. I don't care. That's not my problem. I sure. care about the workplace of the right. industry. I want women to have a fair shot at competing for venture capital to launch game studios. I want there to be a realization that women um, have different choices than men do once they become parents in this field. I want sexual assault and sexual discrimination to be taken seriously. If I get those things, that ends my concern, like from a feminist perspective in the game industry. I just want us to have the same shot that men do at making our dreams come true. You know what? I, I think we're on the same page. Mace has asked a not serious question that I have to ask because it's so damn funny. Um, the, sure. answer, the question is, is would women pay extra for penis physics? That's the question. No. Would this be no. similarly marketable? No. The, no, the answer is Cyberpunk no. had uh, penis too, and uh, I think that is as far as, uh, as uh, penis can go. Cyberpunk couldn't like manage anything else in its fucking game, but at least it could do that. We got penis too technology. Hey, man. That's, that's what's important. <laughs> yeah, men are much more visual on that front um, as a general rule. All right, Nivik is in the color queue. Nivik is also something of a Pangbird legend. Nivik, what are you thinking? Ask a question. Please keep it snappy for my good friend Bree here. What are you thinking? Just uh, get out of here fast. Uh, just, snappy just means ask, ask your question as quickly Hi, Brian, as you can. Hi, Brian. How you doing? Good to see you. Um. Yeah, um, you have to. I think at times you have to be careful of talking to tone deaf enablers that have biases. The so, what? Uh, tone deaf enablers? Is that what you said? I just didn't hear you. 
that have bi that 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 like like uh, that have bi- that have that would have a bias to the things that you're talking about in saying that uh, you're crying wolf. So Nivik, what are you saying exactly here? I'm I'm trying I'm trying to understand. Sometimes when you uh like like she's talk like if she's saying like uh she's talking about like uh, sexism to men who would probably would take issue with that as guys and thinking how does that partake, how, what what does that say about me? What's your Nivik, What's your question exactly, dog? Um. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I was just, I was just, uh, um, put, bringing up, uh, their, their, their bias factors like that are there where, when, when you, when, 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 she, when she's mentioning a problem in, of sexism in the male industry that a lot of guys wouldn't, uh, wouldn't, uh, take it wouldn't wouldn't agree because they're guys and so, they would just be biased against what she's saying so so are you tra- so are you saying that just a lot of guys would argue with what she said simply because they're guys and they want to defend their um sex is is that what you're saying yeah it, it, i think it, it's taken in uh offensive ways if the person is okay. being called sexist. I, I think I get what you mean. No, I, and, I think I and, and they're part I think of I understand. I think I can translate. Culture. Yeah. I think I can translate. Yeah. Thanks, Nivik. Yeah, I think I can translate what he means. I think he's basically <laughs> asking to let let's not generalize to like men writ large, because that activates like defense mechanisms and bias and just say these particular men are doing these particular things and it's way too common and we need to stop it as opposed to being like men in this industry do this as like a overly broad category i think that's what he's saying um i, I think so i think it's uh, uh ironic that uh you know women or progressives as a whole like we are accused of being hashtag triggered or you know facts don't care about your feelings or, or boo cry some more and like i'm literally being asked here to like phrase this in a way that doesn't upset men like dude i'm an engineer I've worked in this field. If you're not working in this field and you're not sexually harassing my friends, I'm not talking about you. And, uh, you know, it's uh, don't take it personally. I'm talking about problem system- systematically uh, that I have a lot of firsthand uh, uh, knowledge on. And right. I got to say, the level of death threats and rape threats I got, if you think like being talked about in a very general way is upsetting, uh, I'd invite you to uh, go read some of the things that happened to me. Well, a lot of other arenas of life, you know, we generally take poorly the idea that you can generalize what one person does to every member of that person's group. However, in the context of our conversation, it was very obvious what you were saying. Um, So Nivik Nivik is right that some people might not like really be sophisticated enough enough or have the um, good faith enough to realize that you're not condemning all men who game. But on the other side of things, if you take it in a pure vacuum, in like the abstract sense, it's always important to be precise with our speech. Um, I think, I think he called me "quote unquote" biased. Which he, no, he said insane. men. He did not yeah. call you "you biased." He said no, no, men no. no. I, say, I think men are connected with their emotions, and where you're mentioning sure. an issue with them, it, it, it's 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 it, they they they're, they're not right. thinking objective. They're thinking more through their emotions in in uh, yeah. their subjective biases, and that I gets in the way. And a lot of times, it's kind of like even if you're not t- they, they're talking about them, they say, "Okay, oh, I'm not that." It's a buddy. And the thing about that is, if you're pointing if you're pointing out something bad about somebody's buddy, they could take it one way. They could take it in a constructive criticism way, or they can take it in a f you, you know fuck you for talking about my friend that way. But you're you're not you're you're you're, you're trying to bring good into in, you know for, for in, you're trying to bring good in. But when a person's controlled through their emotional biases, that could be. A potential problem, and the thing about and, and, and the thing about the, uh, the the problem not being addressed of sexism that's there, it's almost as if it's you you know uh, it doesn't really exist, and you just cry wolf, and it's really there. That means it gets worse. It gets it, it persists. Cry wolf. When Can you explain news, what you mean by that, please? Say, say again, ma'am. Can you explain what you mean by cry wolf in that context? 
Oh, oh, like, like what, the things that you're complaining about isn't really true. And, you're and, and not true? wait, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. no. You, let me, let me explain. Let me explain. He's I'm not saying from, what she's saying is not true. I'm saying not people are assuming. There are people yeah. who are taking what she's saying as not true falsely, and by not taking it true falsely, you're enabling the problem, and the problem persists. And when the problem persists and get worse, then it's just going to revert back to well, it must be something about the woman, right? Because if this yeah, problem yeah. don't exist, then it it, it can't it, 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 it you know it, it's got to be something about her. Yeah, and thanks, Nevek. Dude, hey, dude run, I gotta run, tell run, you run. something. Let me get let me just drop some truth on you, right. straight up. And I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I'm talking to you like a friend. I'm talking to you honestly. If Me or you, Pat? You. If you think there's something you can think of that the women in the video game industry have not been asking themselves for literally the last 30 years, you're wrong. We have tried everything. I cannot tell you how many times I log on to Facebook and a woman is uh, posting something in some of our secret groups. It's like, I need to give a man on my team some feedback he isn't want, going to want to hear. Can you help me right away? Help me write my talking points so he will be able to hear it. That is how unfree we are to express our thoughts and feelings. You know, in addition, I would really ask you to consider the way we got into this mess in the first place was in the 80s and 90s. Go look at the women that worked at Sega historically. They mm -hmm. tried this playbook of just being nice and not making men feel attacked. And the problem is our workplace kept getting worse and worse, no, worse. and worse and worse and worse. I think that it's at a point today that we've got to have adult discussions and bring these problems into our life into the light. And I think, you know, it's at the point now where you're having court cases where the judgments yeah. are so high, they literally threaten Activision getting acquired by Microsoft, a multi-billion dollar deal. So this isn't just about some women that are their perception. This is literally threatening these companies because the lawsuits are so high. Yeah. So I think it's time for some adult discussion. I'm going yeah, to ask Nivik, Nivik. How are no, you no, no. talking? Can, I, can I speak to you real quick, Bayana? I know it, Nivik, I know what you meant, but um, I know what you meant. I'm going to defend you and translate. I know what you meant. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I, 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 um, I, how are you I, even talking? You're not even in the callers. This is this is miraculous. Um, Yeah, I mean, Mace has a comment along these It'll lines. It'll be real quick. Okay. Okay, Mace, go Okay, so she's, no, she was talking about like, uh, like uh, how women were uh, asking themselves, uh, like uh, they, 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 uh, uh, question on, on how on how to things uh, would movement and where a lot of the, uh, oh, the, 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 the the issues that was being fought for in civil rights movement and transferred over into women in the workplace and uh, being and being discriminated against. And and uh, sexually harass and uh, and the thing about it is if 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 they marginalize uh, in society uh, it, it 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 could it could uh, you know as as like a crowdsource or, or a group uh, um, it, that 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 can help and um, and, uh, no. and 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 any type of any type of thing negative you could ice you 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 you, you, you that that's harmful you can isolate uh, that. Um, isolate yourself from that. Yeah, thanks, okay. Nivik. Appreciate uh, you, man. Okay, bye. I'm not talking about all male gamers. I know you're talking I didn't say about gamers at all. I know I'm talking well, about the males players. in the gaming industry, or yeah, to some extent. And I, I think Nivik's point is basically the more specific you can be in your speech, um, the less you risk like triggering emotional knee jerk, and the more likely it is that people are actually going to absorb what you're saying, which is eminently reasonable. And that doesn't make it like good or like maybe it shouldn't be the fact that people are don't think and are like so knee jerk. That shouldn't be how it is, but it is how it is. And you know, men are like it might be a more effective way to spread the message. Is I think basically what he said. Um, it seems to me that if you looked up and you asked a bunch of people who are some of the most um, famous uh, critics for the way women are treated in the video game workplace, I would be on that list. I'd probably be in the top five. Sure. And uh, I think I've been pretty damn good at spreading that message, actually. So sure. there it is.
Sure. Um, yeah, just translate Nivik there. I feel you. Um, I feel you. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, can we actually can loop. we can we loop around to something Mace was saying? Because I think this is uh, very perceptive. Yeah, we can uh, we can we can loop around to something else. I, I had somewhere I was about to go, but sure. yeah, let's do that first. So Mace was saying, like when women in the video game industry are talking about the workplace conditions, he feels upset as a, a white male. I actually think that's very true. Um, so, you know, I mentioned earlier in the show, I was a Republican growing up. I worked in, uh, I actually worked in Trent Lott's office. It was one of my first jobs out of college. Uh, so, um, I will never forget while we were working there, we did a poll and we were trying to figure out how to beat the Democrats that, that session. And one of the things that came back from that poll was we were trying different questions. We could say, like, the Democrats want to do this with the economy. The Democrats want to do that. And the thing that tested through the roof was Democrats want to take away your culture. Just tested through the roof, especially with- It works with, now, uh, too. Yeah, that, it does that's now. The thing. You want to know why Republicans are winning. That's why. 100%. Right now. You make someone feel like their culture is under attack, and yep. they are going to get extremely hostile for that. I think there's a conception, respectfully for you, Mace, that you. I think a lot of men in this field feel like it's your culture and it belongs to you, and like people like me are interlopers. I can promise you, I, there's no one loves games more than a game developer. You know, I'm an old school gamer. I come back to X Wing and Tie Fighter. Um, you know, the year uh, I got my NES, my grades went to hell. Yeah, I'm old school with this, and I understand what you, you're saying about the uh, feeling like the culture is under attack. But I am trying to grow the culture. I think the in, I think the industry is going to be stronger when we make it so women can work here too, where women gamers can be taken seriously. I want all of us together because I I don't consider like you the gaming culture. I consider us the gaming culture. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think that's right. I'm not sure if that's what Mace was saying, but I, I think the point still stands. Um, I want to move on to some other stuff that I want to talk about. Let's um, do it. Okay. Well, Mace, Mace, do you want to respond? Um, Mace just hopped in callers for one second and then he left. Okay. Yeah. He's back. I'm going to let him respond. And then we're going to hop to something a slightly different from gaming. We're going to try to get to some of the year more, uh, how you've developed politically and some questions about that. We're going to get there eventually. I promise. But, uh, Mace wonder is good. Mace, go ahead. Keep it snappy, bud. Um, it's an interesting point, but would you still make that point? If I also agreed with you, I don't, I don't consider gaming culture to just be a male thing. I, I, I don't understand. Can you repeat that? Um, would you still make that same point if I said I actually agree with you that gaming culture is not just a male thing? Still say that I think men in the video game industry feel like their culture is under attack? Uh, yeah. I would. I think that's largely why Gamergate happened. Uh, men in this field felt like their culture was under attack. What could that culture be if it's not just a man thing? Uh, I think it's everything. Um, like gaming culture, uh, look at Call of Duty. You know, the player base of Call of Duty nowadays, I just signed up for Modern Warfare 2. Uh, when I signed in this morning for the first time, I had to click through some agreements that said I would not be sexist on voice chat. I would respect people's gender identity on voice chat, and I would be polite on voice chat. That's what I want. Just let's treat everybody like they're people. Let's let's keep bring all the consumers in to enjoy our product that we can. And uh, calling people by the pronouns they prefer falls under the same basic decency category sure. to you? Sure. Why? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, I think you talk to people with respect uh, when you can't. Mace, uh, are you are you good? Or do you have anything else to ask? Uh, it's a shame because like, I half agree with the things you're saying. Uh, <laughs> like, you, you say good things, but then you just throw in a few tiny ideas that I don't like mixed in with the good stuff, which makes it hard for me to uh, fully agree with you. That's okay. I've been watching your chat comments. I feel the same way. <laughs> um, Lexicon says that's why Todd died. Trash talk and screwing with the other person's head is part of the game. 
Um, oh, dude. Oh. Uh, apparently, you can trash yeah. talk. Just don't be sexist while you're doing it. You know, uh, tell the other the... player they suck. Don't tell them they're a bitch and should go to the kitchen and make you a sandwich. But that's so much more cutting, right? And the point is psychological warfare in the chat lobbies. No. Um, just, you know, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I've seen the COD uh, lobby memes. I've, um, I've, I'm going to play into them a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to move on to something, hopefully a little bit more. Can I say something? Who is that? Nivik? Um, yeah, one thing. Go. I see where she's coming from when, uh, in, 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 like, like bringing up race and gender makes folks wonder if you're, uh, by the way, by the way, I'm not, I'm, I'm talking, I'm, I'm coming from a point of view where, in how you're misunderstood. I'm not accusing you. Sure. Okay. So, so like, I think the thing is when race and gender is brought up, it's kind of like, if it's in a, if, if it's a, it's 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 almost as if you're the sexist. It see it seems that way from the from other people's point of view, and the thing is, they're not being objective. They are leaning to their 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 biases in thinking you're, uh, you're being you're 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 being biased from your point of view as a woman just attacking a guy for the sake of them being a guy and you're really sexist because you know that's that's where you're coming from but they're projecting their feelings onto you of their of 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 their biases where if just because i mean you could you could attack a person in them being sexist but they can actually be that but they could potentially not be that and where it's a false accusation and the person is yeah, just yeah. trying to smear them uh, 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 to, 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 you know, uh, they're just trying to smear them wrongfully to get a leg up somehow. Yeah. And I'll, um... People end up not thinking objective, you know, they, they end up thinking through their emotions. But uh, sometimes even if you bring facts, it doesn't care because people are too connected emotionally to their biases. And they yep. just assume that you're being a uh, uh, that you're really the sexist or you're really the racist or even mentioning race or mentioning yeah, sex. I got gotcha. you. I can translate. Yeah, I mean, this is what we've been talking. about. This is what we just talked about. He's basically saying that um, when you come out and say that men are like this in this particular industry, people will get emotionally triggered, and that can because that attaches to biases, defensive. Um, you can not look at things objectively the way you should, and maybe it'd help to try to. Avoid that um, is basically what he's saying, um, and we've we've already went over this. I think. Yeah, um, I didn't hear a question yeah. there, but I, I understand yeah. the point. It's uh, uh, yeah. Quick For thing: sure. the only thing I would say in response to that is my mission objective with GamerGate from the start was not to get gamers as a, a a base to like me. It was to get companies shamed in the press enough to enact better HR policies. Right, Those you got very make different mission college. objectives, and I think I was very successful at the latter. Right, you got to um, if you want people to vote with their dollars, they have to know what's going on and decide. Yeah, right, hundred percent. Um, I am curious though. I I feel there's a fine line between that, like. Hello. I think he cut out, unfortunately. I think it's my show now. <laughs> no, it's mine. <laughs> Maybe it was a great point. What's up, guys? Wait, so, what's this lexicon a... is saying? Sargon Hello? endorsed me? What on earth is that? Hey, can I ask you a quick question? If you don't yeah, mind? go for it. So I, I guess I'll, I'll piggyback off of Niv Nivik saying, um, how important is it really when you're tr trying to just solve a problem and speak logically, like on either side, whether somebody feels you disrespected their pronouns or their identity, or, you know, they feel someone feels like you offended in this way or that way, like how much... How how much do we actually have to 
pander to people's emotions and perceptions when we're talking about like material reality and kind of like logical things that shouldn't offend anybody like what's the correct way to tiptoe is it even you worth appeal to their emotions is how you do it you yeah. appeal to their emotions you say hey there's criticism about your brother i love your brother he's a sweet guy and <laughs> i'm not saying it's out of malice but he sucks at in in in, in uh in doing in, 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 he, he sucks in how he pitches and how he swings the bat and 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 uh don't take this any personal okay? he needs training on that area yeah um, but sometimes when you do it as a matter of at the same time yeah i i feel when you do it as a matter of fact or it's like you always include oh. you know the kind of emotional Hello? condolence in there um, when when it's always oh. in there then it's yeah, um, Parker's back. It can be back? disingenuous. Oh, hello. Hey, I'm sorry, guys. Um, I literally think I just had like a power surge. I heard oh, like no. snapping and popping, and my laptop went dead. Um, <laughs> I have a surge protector on my thing here, but it just went dead. I got so worried, I thought my computer was like dead forever. Ah. But no, we're back. Oh. We're back. I, uh, I we don't have a oh, Huawei wait. phone. Yeah, yeah. All right. So. I think Loki, just to put saying? a button on what we were talking about, I think I would say um, I don't think anyone would disagree that people on all sides are way too emotionally reactive uh, today. Uh, you and my friend Keffels uh, just uh, recently has been talking about uh, the problem with tender queers online, You know, people that um, are frankly very abusive in the trans community, sometimes uh, a position I very much agree with. So um, I, I think... You know, one of the things I learned when I ran for office is there's a big difference in the activist community and the political professional community. The work I'm trying to do is focused on policy, um, you know, lawsuits, HR policy, hiring numbers, like very concrete real world measurable objectives i'm not into like someone insulted me online or used the wrong word for this or the other i i just don't care at this point so um I'm not right. agreeing people work on other things just saying that's where my focus is so with that in mind i guess i have the question how'd you make that transition to politics um from your, can you hear me okay can you i can hear you Okay, so yeah, how did you make that um, transition to politics from your career? I, as, I was um, pissed off when Trump won. <laughs> okay, it's not so more complicated that? than why, that. Why is that exactly? This is the fun stuff. This is what people oh came. Oh my God. I mean, Trump is a nightmare. I could tell, um, you know, having worked in the Republican Party, I I saw the, the trajectory we were going on where it was just on this increasing course of, of not making sense. And um, I just, uh, you know, I was certainly not the only woman that ran for office, but uh, I was in the army of them and just felt I had to try to do something. So like what, so just to get a little bit more granular, what sure. policies exactly did you not like from him? Or was it just a personality? I imagine it was both because think... full disclosure, I don't love his personality either. Um, For me, please understand, you know, my father's a naval officer. Uh, mm -hmm. My favorite shows are 24 in Homeland. And I know there's some Democrats out there, they're anti nat security and want open borders and all that stuff. That's not me. I love this country. I get very teary when I read stories about sacrifice. And I love our democracy, right? And um, I felt that Trump was truly a danger to the country and the republic that I love because I didn't think he would take being president seriously. And I think history has borne that assumption out. So you thought that even back in 2016? Yeah. Why? Uh, just reckless. Uh, did not care about the norms, did not seem to understand foreign policy or the economy or really anything it was uh it was very similar to what i saw growing up in mississippi which was the the politics of uh, racial resentment uh just that on a larger scale and uh i'd seen that playbook for where it took my home state and i was afraid he was going to do that to the nation okay so now you've brought up like three separate things and i want to yes. go through one of them one at a time well four technically if you count the democracy stuff we can get to j6 eventually sure. um but so as far as foreign policy goes um 
I'm not going to lie to you. Foreign policy is one of the things that I actually like Trump for. Like the Abraham really? Accords feel like kind of a miracle. Um, okay. He was like really nice to Putin and Kim Jong-un with his rhetoric, which I do not like. That's not something I like. But as far as like practical results, like Russia kept the fuck quiet. Um, they didn't gain ground. They Like when Obama was president, they annexed Crimea. And now that Biden's here, now they're doing a small incursion into Ukraine. Um, and when Trump was president, none of that happened. Um, and the Abraham Accords based, um, made giant strides towards peace in the Middle East. I think the Iran nuclear deal was always a bad idea. I'm glad he got rid of that. So, you know, as a general rule, I, th- I thought his foreign policy was pretty good. What real problems do you have with it? I'm Obviously, I'm saying what I think, but I'm very curious for what you think. I'm sure you disagree with everything I said. So please no, tell I me what I'm I don't wrong. disagree with everything. I thought the Abraham Accords were... I, I don't think it... I think it was more of a mixed bag than a solid outcome. I, I'm not convinced that it led to any increased peace in that region, uh, as I think uh, today has borne out. I think that uh, blowing up the Iran deal, look, it was imperfect. Um, 